I think we're good to go. Oh, well, welcome to the most brutal podcast anyone could ever listen to. The worst podcast <laughs> with fat and ugly hosts. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a good way, way to intro. 400 followers on TikTok as of today. Yeah, which we, we is, went from, what were we before the last episode? Less than 80 oh, or 60, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let me go have a look right now. Definitely nowhere near as many as we have right now. If, yeah, if I click followers, yeah, last week. So today was the fifth. The last one's on the 30th. So we had 49. So we went from 49. We actually 10X are following. Yeah. Pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet if you think about it. Um, it definitely happened because most, so the last, the first big one was the Marvel Gone Too Far. We got 110K views. That was very controversial. Well, for me. Yeah. Um, what was this one here? Oh, Android coming to iPhone. So April Fool's Day was a huge success for us. Oh, yeah. And, and our listeners know if they were paying attention, listening to the last episode, we told you we were going to try to do something funny. And after the podcast, we were going to record some April Fool's Day stories just to see if we could kind of trick, twi- uh, trick the internet. And I think we did we on, did. on uh, the Android coming to iPhone. We got about 6,300 views. Not bad. And the GTA 6 video, almost 300,000 views. Yeah. Wow. And a lot of shares. I think we, we kind of speculated that we made that video and we didn't get really any hate on it for lying about GTA 6, but we had like over 500 shares. So people are sharing it to their group chats, probably trying to clown on their friends. And- you had to be an idiot to believe it. Mm-hmm. And so what was so funny it was that it was in Hillsborough, North Carolina, and so many people were actually from there. And they're like, this is trippy that I am here. And they just... Uh, call me out by name. And then our last one that's just only almost doing good as of recently is for uh, 42,000. And that was the RDJ one where Iron Man 4 potentially coming out. Yeah, it's starting to rally that piece of content. So who knows, it might hit 100,000 by the end of the week. Um, just because it went from, it was like really doing nothing. And then... Oh, it just hit 43,000 as I refreshed the page. Yeah. So, so like, I think I think last time I checked, which was like a few days ago, like probably on the weekend... Um, it had had no movement. So it's interesting how TikTok works. Maybe some of these pieces of content. The issue is it's not April Fool's Day anymore. So now no. we just look like jackasses. Yeah. Because videos that we made on April Fool's Day are just starting to rally now. So They're not funny anymore. Well, you know what? I think people just realized that it was posted on April 1st and they can kind of like appreciate. It the, is funny. The video in itself is really like that was the one Dylan edited. So it's you, funny on its own. Usually I'm the one editing it, but Dylan is like really good at editing and the motion graphics and he did it this time and it was so good. Really, really funny. Really good. Well, why don't we just kick it off, Lee? What episode are we on now? Episode nine, almost at 10, almost double digits. Nice. We're still doing it. We're still going strong. You know what that means? Is Our it? next target is triple digits. Oh, damn. And then the next one after that, quads. How many weeks? Quad. I don't even know if we'll ever get to a thousand, right? Why? Well, like a thousand. Divided by like 52. That's 19 years, dude. Yeah, unless we start doing like double. Unless we start doing like three podcasts, four podcasts. A day. A, a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Are you doing podcasts? <laughs> you should be doing like four podcasts a day. <laughs> you should be doing four podcasts a day. How old are you? Yeah. Oh, man. That's so good. Yeah, Gary V, I don't have time. <laughs> Do four a day. You know, like anyway, I think we can get to triple digits. Like I think triple digits is a couple of years at the current pace that we're at. Oh, yeah. But um, I think getting to double digits is kind of a big deal. I think the first 10 is kind of like, are you committed to doing this? Mm-hmm. And I think we've shown that we're committed to doing this. Yeah. So if you're listening to here with us today, thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to us thus far. And hopefully 10 episodes from now will be half decent to listen to. Um, I guess why don't we just kick it off and um, let's roll that intro. Welcome to the Fast Forward Podcast, everybody. I'm your co-host, Lee. And I'm your co-host, Lewis. And welcome to the fastest growing Canadian tech podcast in the universe. In the universe. This week, we're going to be talking new social medias again and magnetic slime. We're also going to be talking about the inventor of GIF, or is it actually GIF? I don't know. Who knows? And today's rewind is just going to be okay. Yeah. It's just going to be just okay. All right. Roll the intro. Just out of curiosity, do we 
have to say roll the intro or does the intro like roll while we no, say but this? i love it okay so it, sounds, intro, it yeah. just sounds cool and then that's, that's when it can go like the you know the epicness goes on yeah, oh and it plays so for cool. a few seconds nice yeah. okay sweet all right well why don't we just jump right into this just jump right into it what's the first story that we have well the first story that's like kind of buzzing right now and has been kind of a kind of a big deal for the last few days is elon musk becoming now the biggest uh stakeholder in twitter wait what happened so elon musk has now purchased like a ton of stock in Twitter and he's now the biggest uh, stakeholder in the company. Elon Musk is the biggest shareholder of Twitter. Yeah. Um, so pretty crazy. You know, we were actually just talking about this on the previous episode or maybe the one before about how Elon Musk was asking Twitter what they thought about Twitter's free speech adherence. And turns out even before he made that tweet, Elon Musk had went ahead and spent like billions of dollars. Um, I'll actually read the total figure here for you um, on stock uh, with Twitter. And now, like this, like he owns more than anybody else. So yeah. he not only has been, he's has he been appointed to the board, um, but he's also you know because he's like one of their biggest users now, their biggest stakeholder, and also super influential in the in the public sector. Um, this is kind of scary. So uh, here's here's what it says here. It says, it was discovered Elon Musk acquired 9.2% stake in the company for close to $3 billion. Um, I read somewhere else that needed to be over 10% to be like, or no, over 5% um, for like, the, I guess, the to be publicly available knowledge. So hypothetically, he could have had like 4.9%. Um, but the price on that, um, the company, close to $3 billion. So this is yeah. like this this is like a, a totally new take on a if you can't beat them join them but it's if you can't beat them buy them and um, we were talking about what could what could Elon Musk do for social media Musk Media you know Elon's I'm um, curious where like what his vision is with the company because I know he like how many he has probably like like 80 million followers like he has a huge that's probably Twitter is probably one of the biggest platforms he uses for marketing right now. A part of me wonders where he sees um, from a business standpoint, outside of obviously him just joining and the stock price going up as is, what's his, like he must have a true vision for Twitter. So on The Verge, it says Musk had ideas for reshaping social networks that um, basically also uh, Mr. Agrawal and Jack Dorsey agreed with. And apparently all three have floated around the notion of radically shifting the power in social networking to users away from these behemoth companies and using uh, an approach to technology that would give people control over what they see in their social media feed. So that sounds like algorithm related stuff, yeah. but pretty much like decentralizing. Did their... you see what Jack Dorsey said? I think maybe earlier this week, he was talking about how he was partially to blame for how the Web2 framework has happened with these giant companies. What did he say? Well, he was saying, uh, and Storm, you might have to pull this up here, but he said he was talking about how Web2 made it so that only these gigantic companies were able to innovate and be able to kind of have these centralized gates, I guess you could say, uh, and that he was partially to blame for it as well. He seems like a man that's very plagued by his own success. I've, I've, uh, I've read a whole thing about Jack Dorsey and he, <laughs> he's very, he's a very interesting person. He he definitely has like a crazy vision for the future when it comes to like communication. I I do have respect for Twitter. I know a lot of people, we were arguing about this the last time on the on the podcast, but I do think he is trying to create a platform for like constructive free speech. Oh yeah. Um, and I do think he does go on that line and he is usually the last one defending the people that aren't worth defending by other people. Like oh, yeah. usually like all right activists or even like extreme left wing activist as well so i do have a lot of respect for the platform i like jack dorsey a lot he's actually i think he's my favorite social media ceo oh yeah nice. i like him more than zuck and i like him more than evan spiegel or oh we, yeah. we're gonna talk about him later today too that fucking guy oh really oh yeah oh i'm interested to hear that yeah you have the tweet, tweet there storm i like jack dorsey as well i yeah. think he's cool he's I think, cool i think what he i like what he did with, with um, web three too with web three yeah changing it to uh block from square square what brilliant branding there's no way there's no way they had planned that when they called it square there's no way maybe they did but then unless that's like a that would be a 900 iq dude that's a to be to be like listen we're gonna call the company square but 
the reason is that we potentially see this trend in Web3 coming, and then that would be the perfect time to transition to block, which is a three-dimensional version of a square. And they were like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. There's no way that was the case. So instead, I think they were just in the meeting talking about the rebrand, and then someone must have clicked and been like, yo, guys, blockchain. <laughs> we're square. We're two. We're Web2 square. Have we you ever Web3 seen, block. Have you ever seen this beard? It's like pretty long. I feel like the longer your beard gets, the more like wise you become yeah higher level iq plays yeah anyway sadly, that's what, not me. what were you saying there storm so he started out with saying that he partially blames himself for the centralized internet um he says he misses the early days of web back when irc protocols were present and email with pj pgp was the main channel for communication which maybe means something to you guys more than me i, I have no <laughs> idea we're too young for this shit yeah okay <laughs> i would assume it's just like it's just like email Kind of like where yeah. like there's no centralized email. Well, the thing that's cool about email is like all the communication that's happening is like free. Yeah, right? you just use a you just pick, pick a client. Yeah. It's kind of like you go to a station. I want to go to Gmail instead. There's no platform controlling what you see. Like I can write something on my Facebook, and I want you to see it, but you might not see it because yeah. of the algorithm. But I also on email, saw, you they always see it, right? Something that was interesting as well is that someone replied to that tweet, obviously bringing up Web three because Jack Dorsey. Storm, you know, is huge on Web3, but also bringing up how Web3 could be the potential solution. And then I think Jack Dorsey says some along the lines of like same issues, different wording, which is true because the Web3 is becoming, there's lots of different centralized, centralized platforms within the Web3 ecosystem. But anyway. Was that, the, was that the total quote? Storm? No, the rest of the quote was that um, regrets having a role in making the centralized internet as, it, as the public knows it today particularly as corporations damaged its nature compared to what it offered earlier. Uh, the public is the ones mainly affected by it as they are the consumers of the online connection, needing its services and having their lives intertwined with it. Interesting. He blamed corporations too. It is interesting. Who else would have done it? We wouldn't have anything that we have close to today if it was not corporations to press it forward. But I think with that comes all of the exploitations for profit and they're all trying to they're all motivated by their investors right for sure so i guess how do we see twitter changing like yeah. elon musk is present anywhere that elon musk is so are eyeballs twitter has virtually become like a meme stock at this point rallied like 27 something percent um like immediately uh, when news broke but the interesting thing was like here, here here's an interesting thought why do you think he did the post the poll before it became public news that he bought it like, do you think if he had made the same poll, but people knew that he owned a piece of the company, like the results would have changed? Like people would have perceived it like he's trying to get insight on a company he's now purchased into or? I don't think so. I think, I think he, um, all, like he's always been somewhat skeptical of Twitter. Like there's lots of tweets where he talked about being skeptical of how Twitter handles this in the misinformation and uh, all that. I think the, Results of the poll would have stayed the exact same. But do you think there's any reason why he did it though? Like why he waited till like just before the, it would have been public knowledge and then like after he bought it? Do you think he was like trying to double check on his investment? He just bought a bunch of money and now he's like, <laughs> um, what do people think about this platform? Let me check. And like just did a, just literally did a poll. Maybe just to, I mean, he loves publicity, right? Yeah, so maybe, he knows how to do it. Maybe just that was it. Like it was like almost like he did that and then made it seem like a, you know what? Screw it. Let's, let's try it. Like everyone voted yes. Let's just try and do it. You know what I thought was kind of a funny, like secondary storyline here. <clears throat> so I don't know if you've heard the story about the, this kid who has like this Twitter account and the sole purpose of the Twitter account is to tell you where Elon Musk's private jet is flying around. Yeah. So this kid's been like trolling them and in the DMS of them and basically saying, Hey man, like I'll take down the account, but like, can you give me a Tesla? <laughs> and then Elon didn't respond. Right. But I think it's so funny. He didn't respond and the news breaks out that he bought a control, like a, a demanding stake in the company and is now on the board of directors. And this kid who is fucking with him and is making his whole livelihood now from these Twitter accounts, uh, is probably shaking in his boots now. He's like, oh shit. Like it's like one of the most savage moments ever. Like Elon went and bought the company so that he could go and ban this kid's account. Could you imagine if he did that? Be, it would be, you know, be more funny if he like had a Thanos gif of him like snapping his fingers and then he, <laughs> and he, and he added the kid and then he banned the kid. Oh you yeah, know, like I'm fucking, you're gone. Like, get lost. I know, and then that like completely demolishes his like poll for free speech. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I, 
No one, Elon, everyone would think it's totally okay. Cause like he was, it was, yeah. just, it was like a security issue. Like people, yeah. he was like telling people Finger where he quotes. was. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I am inevitable, you know, <laughs> fucking Elon. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. I, mean, I think the, the things that we can expect, he, so he, Elon's quote, he actually responded to the CEO and he said, looking forward to working with Prog and Twitter board to make significant improvements to Twitter in coming months. So yeah. how, what does he have? He must have, you know what? This guy's a big Twitter user and a genius. So he probably has like a list somewhere in his like Apple notes. And he's probably compiled the list of all the things that he wants to fix. And Sorry, he, did you say on Apple notes? Elon doesn't use Android. There's no, not a chance Elon uses Android. <laughs> Wait, did you just assume Apple Notes? Yeah. Why doesn't he use Notion? I just feel like the guy's like, you know, kind of busy, like open to Notes. I guess only geniuses use Apple Notes. I assume he uses Apple Notes, man. I don't know what to tell you. Actually, maybe he's working on his own, like on his Tesla phone. Evan Spiegel uses Apple Notes. Yeah. Do you think he's a genius? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, think all, I think all great people use Apple. I just, I rarely see... You know, Jason uses Android though. My point stands the same. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I think most, I th- I, my, okay. Anyway, I assume he uses Apple. Maybe he doesn't, but I, I just feel like he has like an Apple notes folder full of ideas for Twitter. Gotcha. And he was probably like, one day I'm going to buy Twitter and I'm going to do these things. That's the kind of guy he is. Like, I think I was telling you the other day, he had a story about how I heard this on a podcast, how he was trying to start a chocolate bar company. Oh, what, sorry? A chocolate bar company. Oh, okay. So he, he actually like was just thinking like, you know, chocolate bars maybe should be better. Then he tried and he couldn't make them better for the price. So he's just that kind of a guy. Like I know we, we see like these massive companies like SpaceX and Tesla and Solar City and Neuralink and Boring Company. And we think those are the only things that he thinks about. But I think he does think about all these problems. He just like focuses his energy on the big ones. For sure. Ones that are in his immediate control. I mean, Twitter kind of is becoming that centralized space already. Like I, I think Twitter's, I mean, I don't like Twitter specifically, but I think Twitter is an amazing platform. I think it's the kind of like our only hope at the moment. Yeah, it's actually pretty sweet because it's uh just like the like, and this is something that I'm not using now at Twitter, but all my friends are telling me it's like the best place to get value because you can just kind of read it. You don't have to like look at pictures or watch videos. You can just kind of get really, really condensed value. So I just got back on Twitter and I'm going to try to see if I can like start using it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make some tweets, you know, who knows? Yeah, maybe you can tweet some real stuff. Some real shit. And while you, speaking of real shit, be real social. Have you heard about that? So I got the app. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> I only have you as a friend, Liz. You're my only friend on Be Real. Yeah. We never talk about <laughs> these, this podcast clearly before we actually do it. Uh, so be real, be real social for all the viewers or listeners who haven't heard about it. Be real. So- this social media might change everything. Okay. So be real social could be the antidote to traditional social media. So instead of allowing users to curate their feeds with any pick they want, uh, whenever they want, be real only lets users post once a day. And so this is Every day at a random time, the app simultaneously sends every user a notification. So user have two minutes to post a picture from their front and back camera, and that kind of compiles into one that you can like view the front and back. Um, and it and you don't have access to the camera roll whatsoever, so it has to be a picture there. So by you don't have access to the camera roll. No, you literally have to take a photo. It has to be legit, and you can't see anybody else's post until you take a picture as well. Oh wow! Yeah, so. Um, so by timestamping posts, the app inherently shames users who post after the two minute window. So because they're like, it's like basically saying like you took too much time to take the photo cause you're a fake yeah. and you're trying to <laughs> yeah. stage something. You know, what I think is awesome about this. Cause I took my first photo yesterday when we were like first heard about yeah, the story. We both tried it and at, at Lewis Menelaus, um, and then at Leewardson for anyone who cares. Yeah. Add us on be real. Storm, you didn't get it. Did you? I did get it. Oh, did was, you get, did you get the Kanye West? Your name or no? <laughs> and the Kanye was taken. Storm was taken. I went with Storm A. Storm uh, A. Storm A. So Storma. 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 <laughs> yeah. So the thing that was interesting was I took the photo. I didn't realize it was going to take the front and the back. Like it both cameras. Sorry. Um, take pictures of the front camera and the back camera. And I think it's kind of funny because like, you know, it's kind of a meme, right? Where people on Instagram will try to take a photo and kind of make it seem as if they're somewhere <laughs> they're not or like, you know, it's like kind of Instagram versus reality. Yeah. And this is basically like exposing like 
everything yeah. in the field of view like you can't really hide you know yeah could you imagine if you try to you're holding your phone like like this and you're just trying to take a picture of your face and then you accidentally took a cross shot or this the very common like trying to take a picture of your shoes or your meal right but your makeup's not done or like now you can't double chin yeah now you can't yeah double chin you can't take like as like there's just more being exposed that you don't have control of i think it's a really cool concept i think it's a really cool concept too so it's really popular amongst um, like college campuses right now. I think it's just cool because it is like something I love about stories. So back when Snapchat first came out, I used Snapchat a lot when it first came out because I just loved being able to kind of get that feeling where I'm having that intimate conversation with somebody because I got to see a picture of them. Usually it was just one that they took right there on the spot. And then when Instagram or sorry, Snapchat stories came out, it was like almost that plus elevated on Instagram, that's basically all I do right now is I just see people's stories and then I'm off the application. I don't really like Instagram apart from that. And so I think that's, it's almost like taking Instagram stories or the best part about Snapchat, the Snapchat stories and almost combining it with Wordle. Yeah. I, I kind of just thought of that. I thought about this one here about Wordle. You know how everybody gets the same Wordle every single day? Well, everyone gets the same notification every day. So you get that kind of- At a different long, time? Is it a different time every day or is it the same time every day? I think it's a different time every day. Okay, so how come Storm got notified last night, but then you and I, we already posted it? Is that why? I think everybody might get like a different, but I think a lot of people get roughly around the same time. Interesting. You know what would be a cool social media app idea? What? Um, something that's just stories all day without the ability to like upload, like like access your camera roll. Because so I think B-roll is cool and I like, but I feel like it just like, it kind of freezes you in the moment and it's not shareable. So like people watching may not find it interesting. What if you could combine authenticity, but with also genuine content? Do you, you think that's what Be Real is trying to do? Well, it's just because it only gives you one opportunity to post. Oh, okay. So like it could, ca- it could catch you on the shitter. It could catch you like on your commute. But like what if you had a really interesting day and it was genuinely really cool? Yeah. It's kind of restricting that as well. I think the, a cool combination, just imagine an app where you couldn't message anybody. You could comment, you could respond. But all it is is just stories and responding to stories. Mm-hmm. Like no Snapchat messaging, just literally stories. And also, I think on Snapchat, you can use your camera roll, right? You can upload stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> imagine, and then edit stuff too, right? The filters and all that stuff. Just imagine it was just like, literally like, like almost like a start and stop camera. And yeah. that was it, you know? Honestly, like, I would even be cool if they did that with Faith um, or Instagram. I just wish they got rid of the, like, resharing posts onto your story. That's just the most annoying thing ever. You know what? That's actually interesting too. What about a, a concept where you take stories, but as soon as you put your thumb down. Like, like you're, well, as you're holding it to watch it for longer? No, as soon as you start pressing it to, play, like, to record, you can't like unsend it. Like, you know how people might like take a selfie and not like it, then retake it. Oh. Or like they're at a concert and they'll like keep trying to find the best clip to post. Yeah. Like imagine like if you record, it's just like, it's like it's recorded and mm-hmm. it's getting posted to your story. It is interesting. It kind of makes you think like what, like what issue is so a perfect, because obviously be real social, it says in the title what the issue with social media is and what it's kind of trying to fix. But I wonder what, apart from that, what other issues do we have with social media? I mean, the ones that it's trying to fix directly and indirectly, I think would be time spent on social media, time fabricating your reality. Um, and like perception like other people's perception and insecurities from yours as well. Like also people say that, so this is not something that I struggle with, but I always hear people talk about like comparison anxiety, I think it's called, or maybe something else, but like when like, uh, like the best example I know is like when a woman posts like something on Instagram and then other women get jealous because of something that's not real. Is that Yeah, yeah, basically like comparing your lives. Like a girl will go on vacation and take like 50 pieces of content and then, post them all year long, like as if she's on vacation. Yeah. And then also like kind of, kind of falsifies this extravagant lifestyle, maybe just a bartender somewhere, but like yeah. makes it seem like they're like, you know, got infinite money and they're partying all the time. But basically because you can fabricate your life on Instagram, people that don't have that life go, Oh man, like why does my life suck so much? Right. I think this app kind of just kind of humanizes everybody. Like even somebody like a celebrity is like posting, you know, at Whole Foods or yeah. like, on their way to, you know, see their grandson and driving in a car. Like, it's just like, you can't, not just pictures of the Grammys and the red carpet. It's like, it's just like the real moments. And it's always a POV as well. 
because when you're taking the picture, it's not, I mean, obviously someone could else could take it for you, but most likely two minutes, you don't have time to set up. So you are taking POVs at all time versus like on Instagram. It's almost like a camera is looking up. Like if I look at a Kylie Jenner picture, it's always like a camera's looking at her. Yeah. Versus from a photo shoot photoshopped at a perfect time when her makeup and her hair and everything was ready. Now it's all like an actual glimmer of like a glimpse of their life. Yeah. You know what? I think be real could be really cool as a way to follow influencers actually. Yeah. I think I, I would prefer that. that. I think I would too. It is cool to see them. You actually, there's this, um, I would call it a mirror. If anyone's familiar with that show, they were talking about this one show called chicken shop date, which is about some girl who interviews rappers at a chicken shop in London. I, uh, UK. And what just makes it refreshing is that she kind of like talks as if she doesn't want it. Like she doesn't want to be there. And it's at a chicken shop, which is one of the, it's like a McDonald's basically. And, yeah. uh, and it just makes it so that it seems me- real. And that's kind of so true. <coughs> I like seeing realistic moments with celebrities. That well, if you're, really cool. if you're like a basketball fan, following someone like Kevin Durant on Be Real would be cool because on Instagram, all they post is like these like high quality photos from games and Shit like that but if kevin durant's posting like in the training room before he eats a meal like what hotel he's staying at like now it's interesting because you're like oh like i know that hotel or oh that's what he eats and for his performance or that's what he that's like what he's doing at the gym and or even like somewhere that's not even flattering right like he's in line at mcdonald's then it's kind of like oh i'm like kevin durant in some way <laughs> yeah me and kevin durant have a lot in common like we both go to mcdonald's and wait in lines <laughs> So for the viewers, I think this is a cool idea. But do you think celebrities will enjoy this idea and actually make content on Be Real? And that's the issue. It's like a one-sided. It's definitely favorable for... The, but here's the thing, though. If it's favorable for the viewers, it should be favorable for the influencer. Because like, if you're... Like, let's say you're somebody that, that benefits from super fans. Let's say you're a musician, for example. A musician that's on Be Real. If this is a thriving platform, okay, let's just pretend it's a thriving platform. Your audience on there is going to be like three, four times more engaged with you on a real human level than your competition, like other musicians would be with their followers on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like it's just so much more authentic. So I think there would be a benefit to the person posting, but do I think they'll all jump on it? I don't know. Cause I feel like it's just like, uh, like they're trying to, they also want to kind of keep up that perception of like the celebrity lifestyle. Right now keep into now. Here's another question as well. How long does it take till <laughs> Facebook and Twitter, copy it completely, TikTok, et cetera. Um, knowing Zuck, if it's any good, he'll have it. He's probably already working on a prototype. Yeah. And Storm, you said it's like really big on, on uh, college campuses and stuff, right? Yeah, Lewis mentioned that as well. But yeah, that's yeah. where it's like, yeah, that demographic. So if that's the case, like that audience is really like culture shifting. Like, you know, that's like kind of, I think where Facebook picked up. And Snapchat is still has a huge demographic when it comes to Gen Z's. Like Gen Z's actively use Snapchat still to this day. Speaking of Snapchat too, there's uh, another story. Remember I said earlier I wanted to bring up Evan? Yeah, what's Evan about up to? I haven't heard of that guy in a while. Well, this is a pretty big deal, man. Snap apparently has made their biggest acquisition ever on a company called Nextmind, which is basically a company that's developed a brain and controller interface. A brain controller interface. I think that's maybe the incorrect technical term, but... Basically what it does is it, it has this, um, this device. It, they have this technology, a bunch of technology actually, which allow you to control devices with your mind and with your thoughts. And the reason that they've made this huge purchase is because Snapchat is betting big on AR. And this is kind of the funny conversation I want to have with you because obviously Evan hates Mark Zuckerberg. He has to. Hates Mark Zuckerberg he, with a passion. With a, with a burning passion. And listen, stories is awesome. And everyone's got stories now. I think even Netflix has stories. But Evan Spiegel, like he's in the bar, like, you know, 20 years from now, like just drinking by himself, still talking about Mark Zuckerberg. He's like that the athlete, the yeah. football, a high school football athlete. That like tore his ACL or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> could have made it big. Oh, made he it was going to make it big. Yeah. He's sitting there with a whiskey. Just, yeah, we could have been the biggest platform in the world if it wasn't for that darn. We were the biggest platform in the world. Ask, ask the coach, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we were. Ask the coach. He, <laughs> like, like he, must, he must hate Zuck. And watching Zuck go all in on, Meta. on the metaverse and then seeing Snapchat make big acquisitions. It's actually its two biggest acquisitions. It recently also purchased um, Wave Optics, who makes AR displays for $500 million. 
um, which was its biggest uh, acquisition ever. So I think um, this acquisition of NextMind, uh, this brand computer interface, it's basically to solve the problem about AR devices in general. Like the issue with them is like these wearable glasses is like you've got this beautiful display now that's, you know, connected to your world, augmenting your reality, but you have no way to control it. So companies like NextMind have been building technology that allow you to kind of control what you're seeing with your thoughts. So just to kind of okay. imagine like, you know, you get a message, you just like, you know, use your eyes or maybe just your mind to open the message. And then I don't trust my mind. Like my mind will always want that instant gratification of knowing what that well, message he, is. Here's, here's where I think things get kind of fucking fuzzy because you never get a message from somebody and then you write a response and you go, no, I'm not going to say that. That's fucking rude or that, yeah. or I'm angry right now. I got to calm down. Like yeah. imagine you get a message from like your girlfriend and then you're pissed or something. And then your mind is like thinking the worst thing to say. And it just starts typing. And you're like, don't send, send, you know, cause you thought of the word send. Or what if you're thinking about something out? Like you're thinking about an email and then your girlfriend texts you like, Hey, what do you want for dinner tonight? And then you're like, like you, you're ignoring that, but your mind is still picking up on the, fr- the fr- you know, wavelengths that are going through your head saying like, We'll send out shortly. Thank you very much. And people are, what the hell? You know, <laughs> you know what could, could also be kind of funny if you like wore this thing to bed and then you had like a really intense dream about like somebody else, like not your partner. <laughs> and like you wake up and like you wrote your girlfriend an email and it's like really weird, but like another girl's name is popping up and like sexual innuendos. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, like I didn't mean to send that email. I was just like writing it. I was just writing it with my mind, you know, oh. my, my sleeping mind, like it had no control, but like, I, I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, there's a number of other companies. Facebook actually bought a company called control labs and it's a company with similar tech, um, and a bunch of patents. They spent a buttload of money. I think a billion dollars on this company as well, maybe more. And, um, anyway, Not too much money, man. Yeah. They're just dropping freaking bombs. But this company that Facebook purchased actually has a similar controller, but it doesn't actually use your brain. It actually uses like your, it goes on your arm. It's like an armband. So it can take like the micro movements of your hand and then transmit. So just imagine like, so actually don't even imagine if you hold your hand out and you, you've got your four fingers, r- wrap your hand around your wrist and just move any of the fingers. You'll feel these micro movements yeah. because all of them are connected right up to your elbow, right? So what they're thinking that they can do is like, I guess, calibrate off of your movements and then basically understand any position that your hand is in. And then now you're using AR and you can just do shit like this, like move your finger around to scroll. Yeah. And basically like as if you, you have a mouse in your hand all the time, mm-hmm. but with way more control. Like imagine the gestures you could do. Oh, like, it'd be incredible. Well, I mean, that's kind of one of the big aspects of why we're not completely immersed in VR and AR yet. The controlling. I th- yeah. I think it's incredible because Snapchat is very smart for going into AR. They have built a really big foundation already with the, um, lens. I think we call them filters, but they're lenses is what they're really called. Like the Pikachu going around your face or whatever on yeah. Snapchat. Huge already. And it's a huge ecosystem too that they're already having developers actively use. And they're way ahead of the rest of the game when it comes to that. Who do you think has the, the advantage? Um, I'm curious what both of you guys think. So Snap's got this mind control, like Neuralink brain controller, brain body controller. Yep. And Facebook's doing, it's not trying to read your thoughts. It's actually trying to read your movements. So if you lift your arm up, like the band can, can feel yeah. that. And then as you close your hand, open your hand, point your fingers, it can feel all that too. Like who do you think is closer to creating a really immersive VR experience? I personally, like, I wish it was Snapchat because I want the underdog, but I think it is meta because I think, like, reading your mind is, like, so, like, that's so far away versus, like, this is not too far-fetched. No. You know, like, that's, like, that makes 100% of sense. And when you have meta money, you can, like, you can put that to, you can prototype that in a year. Yeah. That's, and I guess, what do you think, Storm? I would second that and just the barrier of people not letting them into their mind. Yeah, true. That's a whole other issue. Yeah, because now they're accessing your thoughts. So, that, so that, that was what I was thinking too. I was like, man, I was reading about this acquisition. I didn't even realize that um, Facebook had bought this company, Control Labs, for a billion bucks. I think it's rumored to be up to a billion bucks, but it's kind of crazy because that just seems so much more practical to me. And when I read that, you know, if I'm an investor in Facebook, I'm happy or and meta. But as someone who's kind of rooting for the underdog here, and kind of hoping this guy can finally get his revenge and like yeah. knock Zug out at his own game... Um, I was like, oh shit, I think, I think, I think 
companies would be smart to go there first before going to the brand. Because I think, you know, you, we're so used to using our hands. Just imagine like any of the games that we're used to playing, but without controllers in our hands, worrying about them slipping out of our hands or limiting our, our ability to, to use, you know, even playing basketball, like you could actually like dribble the ball and flick your wrist. And you can't do that with a, like it, you know how awkward it is to, to yeah. throw a basketball in a hoop with an Oculus. You know? well, asked, yeah. Well, but at the same time, it also makes sense from both of their areas too. Right now, Snapchat is a much smaller <laughs> company. And so I think for them, it makes more sense to uh, innovate in that way. Like take the bigger risk versus Meta, which who has already invested so much money into yeah. this new metaverse related uh, things as well as Oculus. It makes sense for them to go with a kind of a, an innovative because it is still innovative. Like let's, it let, is. let's not pretend like it's not innovative. Oh, that's super sick. But it's not as like forward thinking as like reading your, like that's some next stuff. level. I also wonder if Gen Z's are more open to the concept of letting your mind be read versus like think about like uh, <laughs> Gen X's or even boomers that are not even happy using Facebook. Yeah, that's nothing. That's it. Like we grew up on the social media. Like we grew up on not have like when we were kids, we didn't have it really. And then it came in as we grew up. So we're really a unique, unique audience. But some of the younger Gen Z's, they like they've grown up with these big corporations basically having all their information. So yeah. I feel like they're used to like maybe they're not literally in their head, you know, but <laughs> they're pretty much they're pretty close to that. They know all of their uses, their interests. Um, pretty much everything about them. So I think as well as, yeah, it's just like with, with their arm, like if you, you can't get much data. You get a lot of data that will help you use the thing, but you can't collect, like you can't harvest data, oh, from it. Yeah. but you can harvest brain thoughts all the time. Like, Oh, he just thought about peanut butter, you know? Okay. Let's go advertise them. Jeff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, what's fucking fucked. It's like, it's also connected to your eyes. So eyes. here's the thing. So anytime you're looking at peanut butter, I think this is how this works. Okay. And listen, I'm not a neurologist or a neuroscience tech engineer, but here's how I think it works. I think it's in a, if you look at peanut butter, your brain is going to like basically respond a certain way. It's like the way that you respond to peanut butter. Yeah. And then next time you look at peanut butter, the same, the same neurons are like firing, right? Let's, mm. and let's not use peanut butter. Let's think, let's say like, when you think about sex or food or oh. eating, right? <laughs> things that are like the things that are like very different from each other. Eating, maybe working out, maybe you, maybe when you, you get, say we're not going to use peanut butter, but let's use food. No, I mean food as a general. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, peanut butter I just used as like an adhesive. No, I'm saying like maybe things less specific, like things that are maybe more broad. Yeah. Um, like the like like I said, sex, eating, uh, sleeping, exercise, whatever. Um, when you when your brain's doing those things, it recognizes what you're doing, yeah. and then that's how it knows what you're thinking in the future. But just imagine, like it did work on peanut butter, and you're looking at peanut butter, and you're thinking about it later on when you're not looking at it, you're just thinking about it. It knows it's like, oh yeah, Lewis is thinking about peanut butter right now because it has your direct visual, like it it analyzed what you were looking at. And started putting putting the pieces together yeah. about what you think. Well, and if we have AR mixed in with it, it's like if I start looking over to the counter where I usually pick up my jelly or peanut butter, it's going to say, hey, have you ever tried, you know, Skippy? And have it on the fucking counter in AR with, yeah. a, with a buy button that Next you can just control this. with your brain. Yeah. And then it like compa- shows a comparison. Like you get 600 milliliters of peanut butter instead of 500 milliliters that you've been getting with your Skippy, you know? Yeah. Hey, Lewis, why did you pick peanut butter? Uh, <laughs> was there a particular reason? <laughs> well, is it... Uh, so do, are you a Jiffy fan? Um, yeah, I, I love Jiffy peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Well, you might... Part you might understand this debate, gifts or Jeff. This is a this is a big deal for me because I have a 50 50 chance of getting this right and I don't know the answer. So, is it is it GIF or is it Jeff? That's the question, right? All right. Um, how much money will you give me if I'm correct? I'll give you let's make the, let's raise the stakes here. How about this? If I get it right first try, you have to buy me a cheeseburger. If I get it wrong, I have to buy you a cheeseburger. Oh. Jar of peanut butter. A jar of peanut butter. <laughs> That's even better. Yeah. A jar, okay, let's do it. Jar of peanut butter. Okay. Jeff peanut butter. I think the, pr- the correct way to pronounce it is Jeff. It is. Yes. You owe me peanut butter. <laughs> I don't know why I'm happy about that. <laughs> so, and I guess the reason I thought it was Jeff is because I just assumed I've been saying it wrong because 
to be honest, I've been saying GIF my whole life. Yeah. So I've been saying it wrong. Yeah. So you're telling me I've been saying GIF wrong. <laughs> no. It is not pronounced GIF. It is pronounced Jeff. Our poor listeners for the first few episodes are going to have to deal with us trying to, <laughs> trying to get content. Go viral. So yeah, and we, so, we appreciate that. But go ahead. Yeah, no problem. I was saying the inventor of GIFs has passed away. Wait, what? Yeah, he passed away. The guy that invented GIFs passed well, away. Yeah, so he, GIFs, that is true. Um, however, in 2013, the inventor of GIFs said um, that it isn't pronounced GIF, but instead like Jeff, and he was very certain about that. But here's the funny thing. Even though he confirmed that it was Jeff, the debate still goes on to this day. Um, and the first GIF was posted in 90. So this isn't the Rewind segment, FYI, everyone. But the first GIF was posted in 98. I'm team GIF, FYI. I, like, if you say it's Jeff, I don't like you. Every time that you've said it, it's made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like Jeff? Yeah. Every time you said Jeff, it feels wrong. Because it sounds too close to Jeff, and your name's not Jeff. And I feel like GIF, like, it's like... It's a GIF. It's, it feels like a thing. GIF feels like I'm in a GIF, I'm in a tough situation. I'm don't in know. a Jiffy. Yeah. Which actually, you know, I'm in a Jiffy, which means you're in like a little fast paced. Oop. You know what also? GIF is like the first three letters of gift. And I feel like GIFs are like a gift mm -hmm. to humanity. Sometimes they're not welcome though. Which kind of I, Some, sometimes gifts are not welcome. You ever get a Paris a pair of like fucking weird pattern pajamas from your parents on Christmas? Or, yeah, yeah. Or some tacky pictures for your for your wall? Yeah, or your house? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I have gotten some questionable gifts yeah. for sure. So. And some questionable questionable gifts. Yeah. Oh wow, that was nice. So the first GIF was posted in 1985, and it was a picture of an airplane going through clouds. I've posted it there on, um, on our Notion. So that's, that's the entire GIF right there. I'm pretty sure it's only like 10 frames. Uh, but GIFs didn't get popular until Netscape uh, introduced the looping GIF in 1995. Yo, a GIF that doesn't loop is fucking dumb. Yeah. So you're telling me that... <laughs> the thing, wait, hold on. How many years was the spread? So how, that's how many 10 years? years. Hold on. So the first gift, 1985, and then the looping came when? Well, like, I think I could have sent you a gift, and then maybe in some sort of proprietary software, you could have opened it. Sure, but it wasn't, like, looping automatically. But it wasn't, like, kind of, like, gifts, like, where, uh, you know, I send you a little messenger message, and then it's like, oh, that's a funny little gift. The kind of shit we take for granted. Yeah, you seriously. Know, our kids get to grow up with looping gifts. Back in the day, their gifts didn't loop. Yeah. Yeah, that seriously. sucks. You have to like replay it every time. <laughs> I know. And imagine if it's like a three second one. That's what a lot of them are. Yeah. A lot of them are short, right? You have to so click it. Yeah. Repeatedly click it. <laughs> what a fucking horrible existence that is. Yeah. I, I would rather die. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather die. I'd rather die than not have looping gifts. I mean, I don't so, know if there was a war going around at the same time, but like it was a bad time to live. It was the Cold War. So yeah, I could have been nuked at any point. But I'm more pissed about the fact that I, my loops weren't giffing. Yeah. Or my loops weren't giffing. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my gifts weren't looping. Uh, but so gifts, gifts are obviously legendary. Um, did you know that Giphy, you guys know Giphy, it's the GIF keyboard that's on basically all of your devices. Or is it Jiffy? Oh, don't go there. Wait. Wait a minute. If no, it's, no, it's not Jiffy. I mean, technically it has to be Jiffy by, de by definition. It's been Jiffy and I don't know. I just don't care. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care the, what, like, thank you for the technology. I just don't care. He's dead now. His opinion doesn't matter. We can stop <laughs> pretending now that he's gone. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. You're dead. So we're just going to call it GIF. Get Listen over it. here. Rest in peace. Your technology was amazing. Thank you so much. But it's GIF. The community has decided. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Giphy is the second search engine behind Google in search engine activity. Did you Sh know that? Shut up. No. Shut up. Giphy, like, I Google don't, number one. I actually don't, I actually don't fucking believe you. Yeah, it is true. So you're saying that people search, people search more on Giphy than on Yahoo or Bing? Yeah. How you, about YouTube? Yeah. No. Yes, Giphy is like, like Giphy probably has an infrastructure for finding these GIFs. Well, we, so you guys use GIFs all the time at work on Slack. For sure. And I feel like people are responding with GIFs. I don't, but I feel like people respond with gifts like two to three times a day here. Yeah. But also take into consideration too, it's like 
every single thing that's like, like we're directly using the Giphy API. Most, like I think Apple does the same thing. They all like pull from that API. So everyone's using the same GIF library. Yeah, it's almost like they are becoming a centralized source for all GIFs. Yo, you know what's crazy about that? They have the power to change culture. Like, you know, like for example, when someone's like, um, you know, uh, uh, they're they're tired at work, so they'll they'll type in a ti- tired and then find like a sleepy meme. GIF. Yeah, like Winnie the Pooh falls asleep. If we're a celebrity or a musician, like let's say you're Post Malone and you have like memes of you sleeping, like kind of like from music videos or whatever, Jiffy, Giffy, whatever, Giffy, they Giffy. have the power to put you at the top of that ranking for the term sleep. Oh, yeah. sleepy. And now they can change, they can pivot like popular influence yeah. by just like, like think, you know, think, think about how big Drake got because of memes. Oh yeah, huge. Like there's so many, like the, get, the Drake clapping meme. Do you, think, do you think he did something? Do you think he did something with, with Giphy? Because like see. there's so many memes with Drake. Oh, it's, it's, it's irritating how many times I see Drake in GIF form. I see Drake more in GIF form than I hear his music. How does Giphy make money? Because I need to, I need to see this. Like this is, this is a conspiracy. That is interesting. How does Giphy make money? How does Giphy make money? So promoting sponsored gifts. So it's the biggest, it's the biggest engine, search engine. Period. And what are the most? So how often do you think people are typing in "hungry" on Giphy? Like right. if you, if you're McDonald's, hungry, and probably, you, and often. you can make a McDonald's GIF for the Giphy search engine to see, and you can pay Giphy to make when someone puts in "hungry." All the memes at the top are like McDonald's. Chomping on McDonald's Big Macs or something. I, mean, I, think, yeah. I think it would ruin the platform if all of them were. But like if one of 10 was, like boom, triggered, I want a Big Mac. Yeah. Has this been happening? Yo, check and see right now. If you, there's a, like if I tip it hungry, like on yeah, Slack. One second. Let me go. I'm going on Giphy right now. So if I go on here and I search with the Giphy, how do I do GIFs on here, by the way? Hungry. I'm just searching up hungry on Giphy. And nothing comes up at first. The only ones that come up first is the, the office is number one. Um, then there's Homer Simpson. Then there's Winnie the Pooh. But nothing sponsored? Nothing sponsored. I feel like it would say sponsored if it, it was. It would probably, but. Mine, uh, the M&M guy comes up and he's like, feed me. So that's one of the top ones on my Giphy search anyway. Can I see, it? Can I see your screen? Yes. Yeah, so do you think that they pay for that? There's a, there's a good chance. Like, here's the thing. It's a huge company, the second biggest search engine. Yeah. They must be, like, wanting uh, to make money. Oh, they have to. And I was going to ask you, and I think we might have already touched on this, but why, like, why, do, why gifts? Why did gifts specifically become so popular? I know why. Because they are... I and mean, you said that with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I know why. I know why. So here's the thing. Again. Memes are huge, but memes don't move. And movement tells way more story than without, right? But the like is, you're about to announce the iPhone right yeah. there. <laughs> Got the turtle back v- on and v- everything. Videos are huge files. They're hard to like to make have like this indexable solution to it. And also videos that are longer than a GIF typically is tell more than one story. Like memes, the reason that memes are so powerful is because they emit a feeling, right? Every week, Storm brings a fantastic meme and it somehow Incredible enco- encompasses like what we talk about. Gifts do the same thing, but they do it with like this level of further storytelling, right? So for example, like today, um, I, I made a joke to Addie about how, how much power I gave her to choose all the vacation dates for the team. Yeah. And she sent me a GIF about how she feels about all that power. And it's basically this guy handing this kid like a 500 pound dumbbell, <laughs> right? And it just like topples a kid yeah. over. Like, it expresses, it, it's, it's kind of like... It's, it's kind of the same uh, ideology of an emoji, kind of. Well, th- I think emojis are the same as the meme because the emoji is the first feeling and so is the meme. Or it could be either or. The GIF can do both. The GIF can say, here's the weight and then the reaction falling down. Yeah. Like it can show the person like pulling up in the room and getting slapped in the face. But only like four to five seconds. Like it keeps very, your attention span. Very quick narrative. Start, stop. Boom, boom. And I think sometimes a meme can't do that. Memes do that sometimes with the before and after, right? Yeah. So like, there'll be like the Drake meme where he's like, not this, but that, yeah. right? And it gifts do that, but like with, you know, within one frame. So yeah. that, I mean, that's, that to me is why gifts are so iconic. Mm, yeah. Gifts are iconic. It really is. I <clears throat> Emojis, everything now, it's like it comes into, like they all come as one now. The emojis, the gifts, et cetera. 
And speaking of coming all as one, unions. What do you think about unions? I'm I'm on the fence about unions, like politically. Um, I think they're good though. Overall, I think the idea is good. It almost makes sense. Like it's for me, it's like I'm obviously pro union union, but it seems like unions are like um they only <coughs> have come to exist because of the poor labor because of the poor um, working conditions that have come beforehand. You know, it's like a chicken and egg type of thing. Yeah, because then also unions, like the downside of them is that sometimes they form and then they end up being very unproductive For sure. and impact productivity as a whole. Because people are like, oh, I'm protected by the union. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so there's, there's some of that too that happens. Um, also, like they sometimes can do competitive negotiating that kind of really hurts the, um, the private sector. But yeah. overall, I think it's a good thing. Well... I don't think this would hurt the private, this private sector uh, to be specific, but how much do you know about Amazon and unions? So this has been a big uh, ongoing conversation. People have been talking about this for a while because Amazon employs like so many, do you know the number, how many employees they have? They're the second like largest employer in the United States. So the fact that they're not unionized, but they're also being treated so poorly, like to me seemed like an obvious opportunity for the employees to unionize. And obviously, um, you know, take some control back because apparently their working conditions are like pretty like dystopian. Oh, it's, it's horrible. This, this will change Amazon forever. Okay. Am- so Amazon employees at, uh, at an 8K worker warehouse near, York, near New York City voted last week to unionize. So they just voted to unionize right now. So that process is still going on. And there's a funny story behind it. It was started by two friends who are Amazon warehouse workers one of them was fired after staging a protest against unsafe COVID protocols in the facility. Um, but these two guys went viral on TikTok because they documented their journey of, start, of staging protests and st- starting this union. Um, so as a reference, after Amazon sales soared during the pandemic, they doubled the maximum base pay for staff and corporate workers up to 350K. While workers, warehouse workers, less than 32k a year now of course those two jobs are not the same but you can see how someone like <coughs> you can see especially how them in the fulfillment side um they're not seeing the same results as the other side this is actually kind of crazy because president biden did you hear about this about president biden i did not president biden talked to the north america's building trade union and said amazon here we come biden said that he was coming for Amazon. Dude, that's kind of badass. That would get the left so what? Oh, it did. Like, like you should have you should have heard the you should have heard the the battle uproar. cries yeah. after. And it was Oh my it, god. Like I feel like they were throwing their bras at Joe Biden. On stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of came it was like it was a you can tell that this guy has some good writers on his team clearly because he had so his thought was like everyone deserves I forgot what he says specifically, but everyone deserves to be unionized and not have to worry about the consequences. Then erupts. He, you know, he does like the left turn, the right turn. Oh, dramatic! Into it, Amazon. Here we come, and then. Oh, oh you know, man. I mean, iconic, dude. But this is yeah, and this comes after Starbucks. I think the ninth location unionized Starbucks. Another one that's huge against unions. Uh, a lot Wait, of, so the individual location has to un, unionize on its own? Yeah, so um, specifically because, like, well, Starbucks, you know what that their franchising model is like. Well, it's, it's a not lot a, different. I don't think they even do franchising at all. I think they just literally build the Starbucks and then they hire, like, local regional managers. That's correct, right? I don't, so yeah, they don't franchise, but that's kind of their franchising yeah. model in a way, right? So yeah, they... Um, but because of that, each individual Starbucks has to unionize on their own. I hear lots of stories about mm-hmm. regional managers coming down, talking about how unions are a business, you know, and make sure, like, I used to be a partner here too, you know, and being with Starbucks was the best anti-union. Interesting. Thing. Trying so to influence people. Amazon has specifically has been really bad with its anti-union practices. They're notorious for, like, making spam bots, like fake profiles on Twitter of like people who are just so passionate about working at Amazon that they'll that's, reply. That's pretty fucked up. And like, then they have cameras as well, like the Washington Post, which we were talking about the other day. It's funny, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, but they're still like independent. So um, the journalistic integrity is still there. But even though Jeff Bezos owns it, it's still talking crap about Amazon. 
But you have like to see that. I like to see that. Yeah, it is good, right? And um, <clears throat> I mean, what if this is just a ploy to get us to trust the Washington Post? Right? Yeah. But there's they had cameras at the voting booths so that they can track down roughly who voted what at what time. Why do a vote? Why like yes, like you know, Amazon's gonna care about the answers, but like why as a as a body of employees, wouldn't you just be like, yeah, let's all unionize? I think just they need a vote to just like confirm that people want it. I think it's just that fear aspect of like losing it, right? And all that propaganda that's being brought down up against like pro union or anti union, et cetera. Like some people are just skeptical. Has it been confirmed that uh that Amazon actually made all these bots that were like, is that like, is there like evidence to support that? Or is it just kind of obvious and everyone just knows that they're not real? There was like some, a couple of viral tweets that like, there's no like official like investigation into it. There should be. It's kind of like, well, it was, it was pretty sus. At, that's at really sus. It's like one of the biggest companies. It's like one of our biggest billionaires. And he's like, he's endorsing this like fake news about yeah. his own company. Like think about it, man, you know what I think is so funny? Jeff Bezos probably hates Elon. He probably oh, wish- yeah. Elon doesn't need to make any fucking bots. <laughs> people love him, love yeah. working there. You know what I mean? I mean, people, I mean, people hate him too, yeah. but, I, I, but he's not like, um, he doesn't create fake Tesla bots. Yeah. Like, well, maybe. Maybe that's what he's doing now. He actually is literally building Tesla like, bots. I don't trust people on Twitter. I, I would trust someone in real life. I, it's crazy about Amazon and seeing these unions. It's Because, yeah, I'm, I'm the same as you. Sometimes I'm not 100% for union, uh, but at the same time, I do think some people need to be treated better i think being able to competitively negotiate without all of the things that come with the union might be helpful but i'm not honestly very educated in the space i do think that i've heard some pretty crazy things about a day in the life of an amazon worker like you know you only get x amount of time to go to the bathroom and they're like yeah. watching you all the time if you like sit down too much you can get fired you can yeah. get fired by a robot like yeah. li- literally like this this software that runs like their amazon os that just like is tapped into all the security cameras might just observe you sucking ass at your job and be like, Hey, like our computers tell us you, sh- you shit the bed today. So <laughs> we're going to write you up. And then two weeks later you do it again. It's like, Hey, you're fired. They have a meditation room and there's like a picture <laughs> online uh, storm, maybe like go find it and bring it up. But it's like, it's like this like small blue box in the middle of this gigantic warehouse. And it's called the meditation room where you have like a two minute meditation break. But and shut up, <laughs> shut up. Is this, is this real? Hold on, you get a two minute meditation break in a, in a blue box? In a blue, like a, a blue isolated box. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So this, this literally looks like a, like a fucking porta potty, a nice porta potty. It's like if you ask someone, like, like oh. it's, <laughs> it does look like a porta potty. <laughs> but we want you to go in there and get sane again because you're getting fucking crazy, man. <laughs> Get get in the blue box and start calming down. Have you seen Matilda? Yes, I've seen Matilda. It's like the chokey. The closet? Yeah, the, like with, the, the, with the spikes in it. Yeah. That's what it kind of looks like. It looks like that. It's like almost like we need mental health being taken seriously. And they're like, all right, we got 10 bucks in our budget. I can, <laughs> I can just picture like, listen, these guys aren't stupid. These are the executives at Amazon. They're at the boardroom table and they're going, Hey guys, um, we're getting a lot of bad press about, you know, the mental health of our workers We're overworking them. They, they can't sit down two minute bathroom breaks. Does anybody have any like cool ideas that we could do something, but it really does fuck all. And um, one of the guys is like, listen, <laughs> why don't we put little blue boxes <laughs> Little, little blue room boxes in the middle of the warehouse and give them two minutes to meditate. Like, that's a joke. Dude, that's it's not almost real. Like, it's almost like the court, like the marketing team was like, you know what? A mindful practice room, right? A room. And then the engineering team was like, we only got budget for like a four by four foot box. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the business of massive real estate of warehouses, but we're going to budget a four by four box for your mental health. Like they're literally in a 20,000 square foot facility or more. That, are, that is powered by robots, FYI. <laughs> State of the art robots. I, w- I want to just say like in the picture, in the field of view, they've given two small trash bins, one, f- like one quarter of the total real estate from the ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that just tells you how much Amazon prioritizes uh, mental health. But this has got to be a joke. If you could- I, wouldn't su- I wouldn't be surprised if they threw a toilet in there just to say whatever. <laughs> We did both. Yeah. So here at Amazon, we care about hygiene and your mental health. Introducing the mindful practice and potty room. And it's like literally where you go, we want you to pee or poo in peace. Two minute limit. You know? Yeah. I know. It's, it's 
It's ridiculous. Imagine just like putting that out, right? Like imagine after you package up like whatever you get from Amazon, like like a slime or something, you put it in, ship it off, and then boom, Sto- in there. Storm, what if we do this to the Tomorrow Week team? How about like on Monday when they get in here, we just create like a little mindfulness box with a five minute timer and just say, hey guys, we know that sometimes this gets really busy at the company. We've, we've created this box here and we just want you to go in there and meditate for five minutes, okay? If you're ever feeling stressed. Like they would think it's a joke. Oh, Imagine God. working at Amazon and getting this. They, the, the employees must have thought it was hilarious. Oh yeah. And the, and the one thing is like, this is just a pretty well-designed room. Like I'm not going to lie. That door looks decent quality. Like I like the, the graphic design, the yeah, color. looks nice. It looks nice. There's like a calming aesthetic to it. So they, they went and hired a design agency probably and they, they hired an engineering team to build this thing. Do you think they consulted a mental health professional? Or somebody probably. or meditate? Because like, wouldn't the first thing be like, hey, when you meditate, you shouldn't be in a box without windows? <laughs> Like, like people get claustrophobic, you know? Well, it might be noise cancellation. And because here's something that I'm thinking. How about a skylight then? You know? Yeah. Here's something that I'm thinking though. It's like, if this just, if anything, this picture shows how photography or point of view is just seriously so important. Like if you, because like if you took a picture of that straight on in portrait mode, you would see just the box and you think, oh, that's pretty cool that they're doing that. But because this BBC News article has taken it, so that you can see the entire workshop in the background of it, it makes it even look more like a slap in the face. Oh my God. Okay. I found a picture guys and I'm zooming in. I think, okay. You know how I said the thing about the skylight? Yeah. Amazon obviously thought about this. So guess what's on the, on the roof of it? Skylight. No. Wallpaper with clouds. Oh. Dead ass. Damn. I'm going <laughs> to send this to you guys. And is it Jeff Bezos looking down at you too? That would be even better. He's the son, like the baby son from Teletubbies. It's just Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Bezos' face. Oh my God. Two, this is so- two things I want to point out from the first picture. On the front, it says Amazon, as in like combining oh, Amazon and Zen. Clever. Clever. And then at the bottom, it says occupied, question mark, look before entering. And it's like, so how many times are you being interrupted during your mindful two minutes? Yeah, I so couldn't just, get oh, into it. Someone's in, someone's in here. <laughs> like instead of having like a on porta potties where they have the occupied or not occupied. It's like, look before entering. So where are you looking? Oh my God. Oh my God. You're right. So the, there's no way to say that it's occupied. Yeah. So it says look before entering, but like, where are you looking? You're going to have to open the door, disturb their, their mindfulness. Oh, you know, no, no, you know what it is. It's, there's an arrow pointing down. And if you like <laughs> bend over and look, you can see their feet. <laughs> look, look at the picture I just said. Look at the picture I just <laughs> Amazon. Yeah, you know what? They this couldn't is, even afford a peephole. This is saying something. The Amazon fucking the, the Amazon mindful practice room is even more poorly designed than Amazon Prime TV. Oh my god! Do you know what's hilarious too? The inside of that looks like every manager's office at like a restaurant that you worked at. <laughs> yeah. Like, has, has like, like I worked the, at Little Caesars, and that's who would like. That's why I'd walk in to talk to get my days off and be like, "Can I get Tuesday off?" And that's what it looked like in there. Also, from that second picture, and we probably should post these pictures on on uh, Instagram, but just so everyone can see what we're, what we're looking at or kind of imagine it, um, we in the room there's like a little black chair and this like felt gray wall, probably for sound treatment. And then obviously that wallpaper of clouds in the top of the box. It really is like the size of a porta part of potty, maybe 50% bigger. But here's another little tidbit from that second picture. Guys, I think I see a mouse and keyboard in there. Oh my God. So I think you're, is I think you're going into this tiny box to meditate, but like while you're at it, it's like, please complete the spreadsheets. <laughs> you know, like please check, like please do your like surveys or whatever. You know what you I mean? imagine just like the ASMR voice is like, and as you stroke to the right, enter the field on B1. Some <laughs> B1 to B5. <laughs> oh, man. It's, this is brutal. We won't, we won't what a bunch of that one anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what a bunch of slimy dudes. Slimy dudes, man. Just a bad type. Of, speaking of slime, actually. What? Um, pretty weird story. This might freak you out, Lewis. I want you to watch this video. Um, <gasps> Some sure. scientists in, I think, in China um, have developed and might I say kind of, you know, weirdly easily, it says they mixed magnetic particles with borax, uh, common household detergent, and a polyvinyl alcohol, a kind of a resin, and it formed a slime that can be controlled by like radio or magnetic waves uh, or magnetic fields. This is the grossest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, dude, does that freak you out? 
it looks like a slug going through your body or like a toad. It looks like a toad that can stretch going through your whole body. It reminds me of Venom from yeah. the Marvel movies. Um, the thing is, this thing hypothetically could be built at scale. So we could actually like maybe get all the ingredients and build like a big clump of it and just start controlling it. Like it's a, like yeah. an alien. This would be a funny prank. I was just going to say that would be a funny prank. Like leave it on the table or like, you know, Kayla are said to come home and then like start controlling it from underneath the table. <laughs> and that's the kind of magnet. I don't, I think it's more sophisticated than that. So if you click the link um, that was shared there, there's another video. It's like a YouTube video. And um, it shows this slime in action. And this, and just for our listeners that are not watching, um, it looks like a toad stretching like its middle body. It's like tar and it's, and it's stretching and moving, but it, it starts to show some examples of how it can be used. And this oh, one like clip, yeah. So it, it wraps underneath this, like um, these two different cables and it rolls it together. Like it can kind of roll and grab and merge um, and it's, it's got, so I wonder how you control this thing. Like they're not showing the controller, but it says it's being controlled with, um, uh, magnetic waves or magnetic fields. So it is, is there like a controller that they're con like with their hands yeah. or like, are they, you know, I don't, I just don't, it seems like they're able to very, very, um, accurately control all the little, like not even just the direction it's moving in, but they're able to control the slime in how it stretches out yeah. and how it rolls it's like full control almost like it has a mind of its own yeah which is like the intro to a movie fyi almost like it has a mind of its own what do you think you what would, what would you do if you had some of this magnetic slime oh i would just prank everybody that's like the most practical thing you could come up with like just fuck with my friends like there's like an alien in the yeah but like looking at this video really is eye-opening like to me it's like okay cool cool but when he when he grabbed that wrapped when he wrapped the clump, whatever you want to call that thing, around a wire, that was, holy crap, this, there's so many possibilities to this. Part of me just wonders if they have like a magnet under, like kind of where it's supposed to be. And then you know how like you control, uh, have you ever seen those window wipers with one side, like you control it with a magnet, like on the other side, but through the window. I wonder if it's kind of no, like that. Look how sophisticated the movements are. There's no way they're just like dragging like a little magnet under the under the thing and moving it around. Like it's it's like wrapping yeah, and but they, like they rolling. Are, they ain't using be real yet though. You know, like this is a fake Instagram type of stuff. I was going to say, I think uh, it's stop motion. That's how they made the video. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, that is definitely stop motion vibes. Dude, could we, could we make a fake video like this? Like, Wait, is this like by, Theranos? Yeah, they're saying they have magnetic slime that moves. Meanwhile, it's just complete cap. It's just complete cap. It's just stop motion animation. <laughs> <laughs> the video, you know what? Wait Actually, a minute. Now that you think about it, the video is really fucking bad quality. Wait a minute. Dude. What? Is it, is it April Fool's Day? This is March 31st. At what time? I don't know. But like, to me, like, this seems like it might be a little... This might be cap? This might be cap. Is it 2.31 p.m. though? Yeah, but like people... You know, People when you like, invest so much time into making a fake story, you don't want it to just have it out for like three hours. Fair enough. Yeah, that could Did be... Did we just get trolled? That could be cap. One second. Let me go in the YouTube video here. The quality of the video is not that good. So it could be cap. Let's see. The, the New York Post posted it two days ago as, so, as well, like and, and with their own articles. So yeah, uh, well, I think it's real. Yeah, well, let's hope it is. I mean, that video quality is just, it's just okay. Which brings us back to our rewind. What do you got for us, Lewis? I keep doing that, but I really like to do it. Yeah, we just cut it out and put the real sound in. Okay. I leave both because I think it's funny. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so the word okay. What does the word okay mean? We've been saying it literally our whole lives. Yeah, I've been using the word okay my whole life, and I still have no idea what it actually means. So this is what okay actually Sorry. Man, we're hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so this is what okay actually means. What does it mean? So on March 23rd, 1839, the initials okay are first published in the Boston Morning Post. So this is the first time okay has ever come out. So it went from, from that time to being like one of the most common things we say today. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny because if you think back to when maybe your parents or some the first time you heard someone say okay and you ask them what does okay mean, they probably just said uh, like yes, right? But it stands for all correct. So that's O L L correct, but with a K instead of a C. And is that supposed to be a way to say all correct? That is correct. Yeah. Is that is that all correct? Yeah, that's all correct. So they changed the. So, yeah, they changed it to all correct um, because it's a popular slang uh, misspelling of all correct. So they changed the all to all, so A to O, and then correct, which is a C. Okay, so really it's supposed to be A C, but it's yeah. okay. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And this term was used a lot by young educated people as it was popular to intentionally misspell things and use it as slang. And it, I was just thinking how funny, like back in the day, you had like so many classes people who just like loved hating on the poor so of course it came from like the rich you know white kids who were just like oh oh correct you oh, know correct that's the slang term uh so th- the man responsible for unraveling the mystery behind okay was american linguist alan walker reed uh he had a huge issue apparently there he had one theory where it was like a French term that was used by a baseball player or something at some point, but it, he found it finally in the Boston. So, Post. so is is what you're saying that, that it was posted here and then people just started using it, just caught on, and then no one really knew where it came from. Well, I think yeah, like I think what ended up happening is that people in Boston they started seeing it in that that area, and then because of the press at that time, people were able to read. A lot, and then they picked it up, and then just the natural way things go, you just say it. It's funny how we don't ask questions, and they, and for something that is li- literally two syllables and is used in place of the word yes, a lot of the time. But here's the thing: is like, is that okay? You don't say is that yes. You say is that all right? Yeah. Right. It's it's definitely, and it's funny now because I don't really say okay anymore. If someone said okay, like in a text message to me, I think they'd be mad at me. Because usually it's KK now. And why is it KK? Because like that, th- this is an example of it happening to us. So we went from all correct to all correct to OK to KK, and like we don't even know we didn't even know the origin until just now. Yeah, I I don't even know. What else are we saying that like we don't even understand? So sometimes it gets typed out O K A Y, and is yeah. that just completely made up for no reason? I think it must be because yeah. it has nothing to do with all correct. I think that's just like the way it sounds. If you had to write it out as a word, it would be like, okay. Yeah, and I think when you say K, I don't know, maybe it's kind of like the old high school movies when they're like, okay, you know, unless you kind of emphasizing the K at the end. That's why they put K-A-Y. But no idea. But that's an interesting little tip, isn't it? Yeah, it's really weird. I'm actually looking up words we don't we use that we don't know the origin of. Well, even uh, another abbreviation that didn't take off at the time was KY, which stood for no use, but it was spelled K N O W Y U S E. So no use. So I think I know why it failed. People had no use for it. Ah, there it is. What's up? <laughs> and now KY jelly, there is use. <laughs> KY jelly. Oh man. I want to I want wonder if there's any other words that we just don't even know why we use. You know, ketchup lies to us, okay lies to us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 57. That was Yeah, Heinz 57. Remember that? Oh yeah. There's like just things that we just are living with and we don't know the answers to. I was just going to say there's actually a couple of other words that we use without knowing really the origin of. Um, where do you think the word sandwich comes from? When you, well, I was say when you sandwich it between two things, but, yeah, but that's, so that's we, where it came from. We probably. use it, yeah. You know, like you know, I'm in a sandwich, or you know, when you people disc- use that word all the time to describe like being between two things, right? I think does it just come from like some deli's way of calling what that food item is, and then we just see. so it says in the 18th century, English politician and nobleman. Um, so the circumstances of Lord Sandwich's supposed invention, wait, Lord Sandwich's supposed <laughs> invention of the sandwich is the subject to hot debate, debate among linguists, linguists. Some believe he consumed his food between two pieces of bread so he didn't have to leave his beloved gambling. T- is this a joke when I'm reading? And his fellow gamblers <laughs> began to ask the servants the same as, oh, wow. So he started putting, okay, 
Hold on. Lord sandwich. So he so he started putting food on bread so that he wouldn't have to like leave the gambling table, I guess. Oh, and to like drop off his plate? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess he didn't want to use a plate because back then they probably just served all the food on a plate. Yeah. He's just like put on bread and then my, the bread is the plate. I can just eat it. Um, That's smart. So then, yeah, so he was just using it as an like, innovation. And then his friends were like, yo, can I get a sandwich? Because Lord Sandwich... Was he just named it after him? I feel like yeah, that definitely sounds like a fucking joke. Man. <laughs> this is not real. Let's keep reading though. So this one, this one says the word um, shampoo comes from the Hindi word that means massage. Oh. See that that sounds really realistic. Yeah, but also like oh, that's a sham, and then you call it <laughs> then you call it poo because you hate it. Yeah, like <laughs> like the, oh that shampoo. You know, I don't know. That was just my interpretation of it. Weird. Even the word ketchup. Like, what Actually, is do you know what's a lie about shampoo? You know how L'Oreal for kids always said no tears on it? And you're yeah. like, oh, that's because you can get it in your eyes or whatever. It's actually no tears. Like hair, your hair tearing. So people thought it, you could just get that soap in your eyes and there'd be no tears. And they didn't say anything about it either. Right. Are I you kidding them. me? The kids one? Like if you, yeah. Yeah, like right, had the eyeball on it, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, oh, no tears. So I can get this in my eye. Why, but why am I still crying when it gets in my eye? Because it's no tears. So they're going to put, they, they have the audacity to say no. Yeah, you're right. No tears. Oh my God. No knots. Then it has a giant eyeball on it. They knew that they were misleading us with that. Wow. Wow. Anyway, it just shows, you know just shows, it goes to show you, we just say Washing so many kids things. kids hair, you know, shampooing it after you snip it. Which, see, we're bringing back. Some, classic. Some more snips. Some snips. more snips. Snip, snap, snip, snap. Snip, snap. Two top executives at True Social, Donald Trump's social media app, have left the company. News follows the app's troubled debut in February. So what happened with, their, um, with it in February? Do you know, um, Storm? Well, we covered it a little bit. But um, like... I didn't realize it was a failure though. Like did they, did they not do well? I, I suppose I guess not. not. Yeah, maybe like just had some issues... I'm truly curious as to, to like, I kind of want to sign up for an account just to see what is even going on over there. Seems kind of maybe. Wasn't like a there like place. a wait list? Remember? And you had to apply. Didn't you apply? Lee? I, I tried to get on the platform. I couldn't get in. Uh, I got put on a wait list. So that's one big <clears> issue. <throat> I would assume you weren't ready for the truth. So it was Josh Adams and Billy Boozer, which were the company's chief of technology and product development. Yo, those aren't just like any execs. Those are the people that, that should believe in the company. You think that was like a pump and dump? Has an app for iPhones, but no app for Android. Ooh, okay. So they don't have an Android app. I could fuck with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> holy moly. Ch- Chinese fast fashion platform, Xian. 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 Like, Xian. I just, I, I, I think of a sound, like a sword coming out of its quiver or out oh, of yeah. its sheath. Xin. Yeah. Like Xin. the, like the samurai sword. Xian. Is looking at an evaluation of a hundred billion with a B dollars with its latest funding round. The company the company's revenues rose 57 percent last year. Shein has a wait. Shein has a valuation of a hundred billion. Yeah, Shein is worth a hundred billion dollars. Yep. Wow. <laughs> you know what? It makes sense. It kind of is like the H and M of like it's like H and M mixed with like. Alibaba because I always see think about it well you can buy girls can buy so much clothes for a hundred bucks and then do their hauls which is and get a huge variety of clothes yeah the thing is so this is a Chinese fast fashion company and the difference between Zara and H&M is those American companies they, they can't there's middlemen between the actual makers and the distributing that they're doing Shen is going direct to the source and fulfilling super low cost fast fashion at a ridiculously low price and making tons of money along the way. And apparently they could reach a, a $100 billion valuation for a Chinese fast fashion company is a really, really high number. That's crazy. Well, they pump, they pump clothes out like crazy. That's nuts. $100 billion. Now, people thought that they wouldn't be able to, um, you know, kind of bear the threat of customers that care about sustainability and about the environment, but they grew 57% last year. Well, think about this, man. Like, with I mean, we're Canadian, 
So it's especially bad, especially in the housing market, but everywhere inflation is getting really bad. So there's always this talk about sustainable versus like what, what call, I can't not buy new clothes, right? Especially if you're growing or summer's coming along. And now that the pandemic's coming, like finishing up, you don't want to wear the same clothes you've been wearing inside for the last two years. So what, what do you do? Do you spend, like think, think about how much money or think about how much clothes you can get at Shein for a hundred bucks. Like almost like a whole wardrobe. Yeah. Right. And then like a hundred dollars, like for women's fashion, like two shirts, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and here's the thing about trying to be environmentally cautious with clothing is you tr- yeah, so I guess if you want to be really like really good at the environment, really sustainable, you're going to buy really high quality pieces, used clothing, clothing that's not going to rip in on its fifth wear, like the stuff you're probably getting from Shin. Um, shit made only meant to last a little bit trendy. And the problem is it, to, be, to basically to avoid that, you kind of have, you're kind of stuck with not being able to wear the latest trends. So you're, you're kind of, it's like one of those things where these two ide- ideas of like wanting to be fashionable, wanting to look, com- be confident, look, you know, look the latest trends yeah. and also it being sustainable kind of just don't work well together. Other decisions, like other lifestyle choices around sustainability don't usually come with that. Like if you choose to be vegan, for example, like, yeah, you might not be able to eat a steak at a restaurant, but no one's going to perceive you differently. Yeah. But you know, the person that's still wearing the same Levi's for 10 years, it's going to have a different connotation, right? And also too, with the way that thrift stores, because like that's you, that beforehand, that was like a really good way to be sustainable. But thrift stores now are getting torn apart by people who are reselling. So you can't find anything good there. Plus anything good that you do find is marked up like crazy now. Thrift stores are expensive. Like there's like a, sh- there's like shirts at Goodwill that go for $14, $14. Like I might as well go to winners and get a brand new. Yeah, and here's the thing is that they're becoming full of fast fashion too, right? So at and the end like, of the day, people are just ripping through the styles and the trends and the staples no longer are, you know what, it makes sense for the fashion business. They want us to be changing styles all the time. They want us to be feeling pressured by our peers and which is why they give the latest styles to the celebrities so that the celebrities look a certain way and then early adapters change styles because the I, I, I saw this before about jeans, right? You know how there's like skinny jeans and then the, what do they call them? The baggy ones or the bell bottoms? Bell bottoms and stuff. Um, they've jeans have gone baggy and skinny, baggy and skinny, baggy and skinny, like for so long, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And usually it's because trendsetters, like influencers, like musicians and actors and athletes, they change styles and then we change styles. Um, but like, fuck, why can't we just have regular jeans all the time? Yeah. Right? It's you know because why. we would be we wouldn't be buying them. So the jean industry wants us to keep. Like, oh shit, I'm skinny. I need skinny jeans. Okay, great. Oh, nope. Skinny jeans are lame now. Go back. To, like, I used to have skinny jeans. I don't wear them anymore. I'm starting to, I'm starting to think I'm, I'm getting boomer dads now. I'm getting it. Like the ones that were like, I fished only on Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays. And they're like 28 inseam shorts. But they're <clears> like sandals and they're Detroit Red Wings cap that they've worn for the last like 15 years. Yeah. I'm starting to get them now. And you know how they always rag on their children? Oh, just buying the trends, eh? Yeah. Or like, no, oh, dad, this is fashion. There's more holes than jeans in those things. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I'm starting to get them now. You know, we weren't the only ones, by the way, that uh, pulled off a pretty crazy April Fool's joke with our TikTok content. A Dallas guy um, did a hilarious thing. Man's got 300 drones and they formed a QR code that Rick rolled Dallas on April Fool's Day. With the drones. With the drones. Jeez. I'll read you what it says here. It says, um, so actually it's not a guy, my bad. Sky Elements Drone Shows. So it's a company. I'm assuming it's a dude because they're always flying drones, but who knows? Um, oh, here it is. Preston Ward, the chief pilot and general <laughs> counsel for Sky Elements Drone Shows. Um, basically, you know, this guy is a marketing guru. Um, he had 300 drones in the air forming a QR code. Everyone's like, what is this? What could this be? Yeah. They're scanning it. They're getting Rickrolled. Yeah. This might be one of the best Rickrolls of the last 10 years. I'm also just wondering too, like (laughs) it's crazy how you can make QR codes with drones. Well, you know, what's going to be, you know, even crazier is like just with AR, right? Like 
that that QR code is triggering opening the browser. But what happens when you're like walking into, you're wearing your Apple glasses and you walk into a restaurant and there's a QR code on the door and you and it's just like the menu just pops up when you walk yeah. in or you walk into Walmart, you don't know where to go and you, you, the wayfinding, like mustard. And like now you, you know what I mean? Like it opens applications, yeah. right? I'm just like, part of me wonders is like if one of those drones just moved up by just five feet. Could it have gone somewhere else? Yeah. Or... Or could we have taken that QR code and like m- maybe modified it a little bit and then oh. created our own redirect? Yeah. So then if somebody like it accidentally picked up the wrong thing and it redirected to like something inappropriate or something, you know? Yeah. Well, that, that could be an interesting way to hack it. If you like take the QR code that they originally created, but make the modification so that's just like one pixel up. And then, and then, then like hack that one specific drone to just go up a little bit more. You've just, you just redirected them to the Pentagon. And, he, and here's another interesting thing. So in this world where, and I don't know how this is going to work. This is how I always imagined it. Tell me if you guys would imagine it differently. But in this world where you are wearing Apple glasses and you're walking into different physical businesses and then Apple glasses are triggering applications, I always thought it would be some QR code that's doing that. Yeah. But like what happens if someone like, just like, will QR code jacking be a thing? Like where... Mm they see a QR code at Walmart and like a prank would be to like the morning of like put a new QR code on it. Yeah, it could be. Cause I mean, technically what you're doing is you're just making uh, an HTTP request to the app to download onto your AR glasses. Well, they just be like web apps, right? Like, don't you think they'd just be like progressive web apps that are like being loaded by your glasses? I mean, like, like, kind of like, the AR, like the AR campaigns that we've done. It's the same thing, really. I mean, you can like embed some JavaScript in there that could, like if I could, I could hack like if, like say like at your house you had it go to leverson.com you look at it it's a web application that is just being viewed in your AR glasses you know just take some malicious hackers to get in there and start putting some weird code in there I wonder how they're going to get around that and make it so like, like the, I, I just do I believe that AR will allow us to just start basically using applications all around like oh, yeah. you know as a park and at different businesses and restaurants so I'm wondering if could they use location to trigger those things or could it I don't know yeah. it's tricky I mean, Security, we need to, I think a lot of software developers are getting into security anyway, as a lot of code is being uh, written by machines. So it's interesting, man. It's interesting, Snaps. Is it meme time? I think it's meme time. Meme time. Meme. All right. What do you got for us, Storm? <laughs> like you guys have been saying uh, the last few times have been like uh, some hurting your brain with some of the memes I post. So I went for something pretty light this time and then Lewis stole my joke midway through the episode. Uh, oh, wow! Because <laughs> I have a, a a jar of Jif peanut butter beside a jar of GIF peanut butter, and uh, in the labels it says hard G pronunciation on the GIF, and then soft G pronunciation on the Jif peanut butter. But uh, they're actually making our point for us because the Giffy logo is on the GIF one. So I think everybody can just agree that GIF is the the proper one. But it's it's about pronunciation, not spelling. So actually, this meme is wrong, based on what the guy said, right? Because this is saying that Jif is peanut butter and gif is a gif but really jeff is a gif sorry right is it's saying like is this not saying that gif should be pronounced gif not jeff it's trying to say that jeff peanut butter should be jeff and that gif the gif oh is it be- saying that there's already a jeff in yeah. this peanut butter oh yeah. okay <laughs> i thought they just got it wrong <laughs> <laughs> damn Still thinking about be real and how can a trend uh, explode there? Cause if it's so like natural, how, what's a trend? So I was just thinking about a funny, like two minute trend. Like I was thinking about planking back in the day and stuff like that. If the oh, yeah. trends oh, like yeah. that are going to pop off where it's like, okay, you have two minutes and it's like the, everybody just, okay. Like they, everyone's doing it. Everyone today. They find, to it, they find a doorknob and it's like that, that, that day was the doorknob yeah. Uh, trend. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I, and the thing is you only have a ch- like a quick chance to participate. And then you miss the trend. You can't just like, I'll post something about this later on. It's like, everyone's participating. Do it. You only got a couple of days it. basically to do something that's cool. I'm curious to see how that app changed. That's going to be really fun. Yeah. We should keep posting on it. Yeah, let's just stay on b Every time I see, like I saw yours one today and I was like, oh, that's, pretty, that's a pretty cool one. Like, I don't know. There's something about I, it. I literally just took a selfie. I know, but I, I was just intrigued because I saw you and I saw your computer and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. My buddy Matt Smith uses it too. Nice. Yeah. So. You actually have friends on there. I don't have any friends yet, so. Maybe we'll see if people start popping off and using it. Um, I need to add you, Storm, Storm A. Storm A. 
Oh, all right. Wow, that was that, a lot of great topics that, that um, this time, Lee. Yeah, and it's uh, it's almost seven o'clock, so I think it's great timing to wrap this episode up. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, if you're listening on uh, Apple, be sure to give us a uh, a little uh, review. Same thing if you're on Spotify. For those of you that are listening anywhere else, we uh, appreciate the follow. Go head over to our Instagram and follow us there. You can take a look at the memes, and um, be sure to make sure that you follow us on TikTok uh, and YouTube. YouTube and uh, Instagram to see all of our short form content, which we're continuing to make in, a, in an effort to bring more and more listeners to the podcast. And we appreciate you bearing with us as we make quite obvious and outlandish, uh, you know, Instagram reel, yep. TikTok takes in the podcast. And, um, you know, we're just trying to get content, but. Thanks for listening to the Fat and Ugly Dude podcast. <laughs> the worst podcast. The worst podcast of all time. time. <laughs> What a brutal podcast. So, someone said that you don't have a life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, they are kind of right. I mean, I just think it's funny to make that assumption based off of a TikTok video. Yeah. Like, I'm going to judge. Like, no one loves you. Your mom hates you. You have no girlfriend. Because I disagreed with you. Because you think Marvel's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are the people that go to Comic-Con, man. Don't fuck with them. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, yeah. All right. I love them. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys. Enjoy.